Okay, one one important rule that I always find, and that's uh, after you find yourself uh, a little shy on your polar and heat's not working and everything else, uh, you're already wasting a little bit of time, okay? Um, time is money, and uh, we're completely replacing these bearings. So what you got to do is you got to get this off of here with the least amount of destruction or no, no, uh, no destruction to the main shaft, okay? So um, instead of creating a whole bunch of heat and fire and all that stuff, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to do a quick wipe down first here on where we're going to grind so we're not flinging that out. We're going to come down through here and we're going to, we're going to do away with this cage holding these bearings in two spots. Let the bearings fall out, the ring's going to pull off and then we'll have that inner race. We'll be able to wipe that down and then we can put our puller on and get some heat right directly to it, pop it loose or go ahead and torch through it and, and, uh, and then get the thing off of here. And then be on our on our way on the rest of this project right here. All right, so let me grab my big shield. We can really saturate some heat on here without a whole bunch of smoke and fire and all that stuff when you get this thing off of here. Alright, we went ahead and got our bigger torch. We have the puller set back up here. The outer or the inner race is actually exposed to the outside. And we're gonna go ahead and put some flash heat on here and see if we can get this thing to pop.
saw the hand thing on here, I'm gonna raise this up a little bit. Um, I just didn't want to beat off that ring there. This one slid right off. And uh, well, this one's coming without too much effort also. I think I might be able to pull it off once it gets to a certain point there. Alright. I like that. Okay, so far we haven't... Not that I planned on it or anything, but we have no damage to the shaft itself. And everything's looking good. We're getting ready, now that we got this cleared out here, we can go ahead and we want to start getting the bolts out of this hub. And this... Um, out of this pulley here. This pulley is held in with another taper lock and this what I have here is the new taper lock that's going to go in on the new pulley mounted back on the shaft. Now there's already there's four bolts holding this one on here but there's only two jacking screw holes. First off we're going to see if we can get the bolts out. This is the key that holds it in and uh, and that's what the whole collar looks like. We will have to wipe it all down. It's like cosmoline type of material or sealer or, you know, moisture uh, inhibitor uh, on there as well. And also, too, I, there's no way to get to that set screw right there to tighten down on that key. So it's kind of, it's kind of foolish unless there's a hole in the, uh, in the um, pulley itself that lines up perfectly with that you wouldn't actually be able to access that set screw there so we just want to make sure that that's not going to be sticking down past that when we assemble it um, but that's kind of gives you an idea what we're going to do so what we're going to do we're going to reach into here and we're going to see if we can rattle gun these loose or if we're going to have to get another three quarter inch drive I mean, this, this is a nice half inch uh, impact, but it's, it's still a squat to pee compared to a, a big three quarter inch drive, which I don't have. Okay, so we're going to get another extension and a breaker bar, and we're going to go ahead and break those loose. Okay, you're in front of the shop? shop? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll be there in a minute. Alright. Bye. Alright, let's uh, let's turn on our flashlight here and let's get a look inside here. Alright, now we're going to be breaking loose the four bolts here. But now this, and actually we're going to look right down in there. Let me see if I can get lined up there light and everything else okay you can see way down in there is a set of three quarter inch threads now I don't know if I can zoom in there let's see all right way down in the bottom there and then there, there's some other debris and all of that but that uh, minor diameter in there is the bore of the threads on the hub and those threads uh, we pull out one of these bolts and screw it into there and then it pushes the taper lock apart and that's how these things come apart there's two holes to do this on all right now we need to reach in there and clean out those threads so when we put the bolt in we um, do not have any galling threads or, or tightening or, or damaging the threads we want maximum pressure we need to that's the tool to break it apart and we need to make sure it's good so we're going to get in there and clean that out with a tap now we're going to we're going to rig up something here and see what we can do about getting a tap down in there. <laughs> That's looking good. 
the more rattle gunning and everything else. Look at it. <laughs> look at the pile of debris that broke loose from between the layers or something in there. And uh, all right, we're gonna get the air gun and we're gonna blow that out. I'll hit the other one while we're at it. <laughs> Smells like dried up rubber belt. Now we need to get this cap all the way down into that hole. Uh, go down, clear out the threads, and then get it back out of here. Now, <clears throat> I've got a, a Blackhawk set here, and this socket is made for square head drive. I have, for a long time, I go, what am I ever going to use those for? And then I started finding out that this is great for actually driving your taps. Now, this diameter just happens, I, I check the fit in there, it just happens to slip in. All right, and then I just make sure, if there is a baldy tent, I always make sure it's in there so that when you pull in and out, you can get the thing out. That's that fits in there real snug. I mean, it doesn't like fall out of there. So this might be uh, a great retrieval of the tool as well. If not, I got a magnet, but we're going to stick this right down in here. And that. all right, starting the threads there. Now we're doing this dry. This is because this is going into cast iron and. Uh, or ductile iron. And uh, I can tell, you know, there's the threads aren't uh, super clean, otherwise I wouldn't need to ratchet this thing. I could spin this thing by hand, but it's a good thing that I'm going in here and clearing out these threads. And then I'm going to wire wheel the bolts as well. And then I will run the bolt in with never sees because I'm asking the threads to do a, a press or a pressure load to drive the thing off while I spin the bolts. See the rust and everything else. All right, let's blow and clear out the hole. That time you can see orange cloud in there because that was the uh, rust that was removed, and it's nice and clean. You can't really see that the threads are any less or any more shiny than they were before. So I'm not going to bother showing you in in there. All right, we're going to get down here to the bottom one now. Same thing. wire wheel a couple uh, bolts here so that we got uh, some good clean threads on there and uh, we'll grab our never sees and we'll come back and we're going to tension that drum up and we're going to see if we can get it to pop right off of there um, <laughs> keep your fingers crossed I am all right we are all blown out and cleaned out now we're going to go ahead and we're just coating up uh, our at the end of our bolt bolts here we're going to use to push the hub apart and uh, I go in there just like that and they screw they screw through that threaded area till the butt end of the 
the stud is pushing against the flange of the taper collar. And I'm just going to use my air to plug those in so I'm not pushing them all the way in there. And blowing out that hole. It's got sand grit all over my tools here. Alright. down I know wish it would already popped off of just one huh <laughs> it ain't happening that way you know it's <laughs> all right now we'll get this other one down in here I'm kind of liking this little light here it's uh, one of the better flex mount lights that I've used. Nice. All the new LED uh, stuff is amazing. Alright, I put a piece of angle over here and clamped it there just to give me a little bit more as far as the, uh, the torsion on here. Uh, so that it, it won't want to twist on me while I'm putting pressure. I also have tension here which also helps uh, from it rotating and uh, I'm going to try this without an extension first and uh, and I'll get this on the top one here and in the tensioning position <clears throat> and uh, it's, it's a little bit on this one and a little bit on that one you, you try to keep your pressures really uniform We're going to get a little breaker bar or extension to go on the end of that, give it a little bit more. And then uh, if it's not coming, then we're going to grab our big torch again. And we're going to create some heat on this whole outside, help swell the, uh, the, the body itself. Hopefully we can get it to pop. All right, we got a pretty good uh, long extension here that we're going to be slipping on. Give us a little bit more leverage. And we're going to go ahead and hit this top one here first. torches and we're going to release our uh, strap so we're not uh, creating heat on our strap there. We went and uh, we brought our bottles around, we got rid of the uh, strap, everything around here is uh, pretty well cleared out so we can quickly put heat around here and we're going to concentrate it as even as we can around this outside so it'll warm up slowly, evenly, all the way around and um, Actually, I'm going to take this chain ball and uh, hoist. I'm going to put it on the other side over here so that it's not up against my back. All right. All right. Let's go for it.
I backed off from the heat. I had, I mean, I can put my hand on here now, but it's still, it's still hot, okay? And, uh, and I drove four wedges in there, which the wedges just fell out right now. I repositioned this so I could get two of these on here, two strong backs on here, so I could get this cheetah bar on the same thing, pulling on the mill table and pulling, and these wedges just fell out. And this was 7 16ths, and now I can fit this half inch wide scale in here. Um, so I have moved it. All right, so now let's go ahead and see if it starts pulling off. Actually, I might I might pull one of these screws out just to make sure that we're not losing or running out of threads here. Um, and she also might be uh, just a pretty good rust ball in there and the weight of this on here. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull up, pull one of the bolts out, make sure that Nice and clean in there. See that? That's dry. These 
components, whenever you're fitting tapers together, they must be dry. If you put a lubricant in there on that, then you create a metal to fluid or liquid or grease or whatever you're putting in there uh, becomes hydro locked in between the metal surfaces and can give you a false sense of being tight. Alright, there's one drum off. Alright, now we gotta pull this center hub off of here and sometimes I'll address my machinist wedge and sometimes just driving that in there a little bit gives it a split and I'm going to polish this shaft with a little emery here before we even try to come off of there. You start rolling dirt underneath your parts and you could get this frozen up or scratch the shaft worse than it is. You want to keep this nice and clean. Okay, we went and got a block and uh, we also went and got our wire wheel. We, had a, we have a pretty good brand new wire wheel here. This is a steel cup. And of course, this is only steel, so I'm not worried about it. If this was stainless steel shaft, I would stick with a stainless steel wire brush. Otherwise, you embed little particles of the metal from the wire into your product or your part. And it, it will bleed rust if it's left out in the uh, elements, all right? So basically, all I'm trying to do is just get that, that rough buildup off of there, kind of clean up this area right here, and then we're going to get our wedge. We... Uh, we went ahead and dressed up a wedge and uh, I got it somewhere here. All right. Alright, we're going to go ahead and we're going to roll it and we're going to work our way around this.